What's up guys, I'm Cameron, Tech Support Supervisor from Fuel Tech USA. Welcome to our YouTube channel where we post videos about all kinds of motorsports, racing, and fuel tech related products. Uh, today, I've got something really cool for you. I've got our dual valve boost control block and I'm gonna show you how to wire this up. But before we get to that, make sure you click the subscribe button down below. And also, if you like videos like this and you'd like to see more of them, click on the little bell icon below. Let's get started. This is the dual solenoid block that we use for boost control with our fuel tech systems, especially if you're using CO2 control. We get a lot of questions about how to wire this up and how to configure everything. So that's what this video is about. The basic and easiest way to wire it up and the way that I like to wire it up is by using our yellow outputs configured activated by 12 volts. So that way our wiring is a lot less elaborate. You don't have to run a separate power wire out to them or anything like that. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the two black wires that come out of the solenoid and we're gonna hook them to a battery ground. Okay. And then I've got my two yellow outputs right here. These are yellow outputs one and two, but it doesn't matter which one you use, whatever you have available is fine. And we're gonna hook up our increased solenoid to our yellow output number one. And then we're gonna hook up our decreased solenoid to our yellow output number two. All right, so now you can see that none of the LEDs are lighting up. It's not clicking, it's not doing anything. Um, that's because in the software, when we go to this screen right here, we can actually set up how the outputs are activated and the configuration of the boost control that we're using, like CO2 control or intake manifold pressure control. Are we using the billet block valve? Are we using a MAC valve or something else? So this one is the billet block valve. So we're gonna set it up for that. Um, also, we're gonna make sure that we have it set up for activated at 12 volts. Then we can go to our output screen and make sure we have our yellow output one and two configured as wastegate increase and wastegate decrease. And we can go ahead and click test. There's our increased solenoid. And here is our decreased solenoid. Okay, so one thing to note, when you do have CO2 hooked up to this and you are testing it, you have a wastegate pressure sensor on the top of the wastegate, when you click the increased solenoid, if the CO2 is on, you're going to hear CO2 vent. The reason that happens is when you're testing the output, you don't currently have a CO2 request or a pressure requested for the top of the wastegate. So the control strategy is immediately going to open the decreased solenoid as well. So when you're testing your outputs, if you click the increased solenoid and you hear a bunch of CO2 come rushing out of the other side of the valve, you have it configured correctly. If you have it hooked up and immediately CO2 just starts spraying everywhere, you've got a configuration problem or a wiring problem and you need to shut everything off and try and figure out where that came from. Next, we can configure this the other way around. We can have it configured with ground activation instead of power activation. I'm gonna use the same outputs, but you can even use a blue output for this if you want to. It's really easy to do. So right now, these are normally a ground. So I'm gonna go over here to my battery and I'm actually gonna make that a power after I disconnect these. So we'll make this one power instead of ground. Okay, so now the black wire has power on it. Take both of our power wires here, twist them together so that they come from the same place. Okay, so now we've got power going to the red wires on our block. I'm gonna separate these, get them untwisted. Okay, now this one's gonna go to our yellow output number one. This one's gonna go to our yellow output number two. You can see now both of the solenoids are actually lit up right now because I have the software configured for 12 volts. So let's go to our wastegate boost control, change that to activate it at zero volts, write the ECU and you'll see the LEDs turn off. Okay, just like that. And now we can go back to our outputs screen for our yellow outputs one and two and click our increase solenoid and click our decrease solenoid. All right guys, there you have it. That's both configurations that you can use our wastegate boost control solenoids in, power activated or ground activated from our outputs. A lot of people like to use the yellows just because like I said, it shortens your wiring up. You can basically have two yellow outputs run out to the red wires 
have the black wires tied together and grounded to your chassis somewhere, and you don't actually have to have a separate relay or anything else that would turn power onto this thing. So that just makes the install a lot easier. But if you have a boost arm switch or you have something else where you'd want to actually control these by ground, like you don't have any yellow outputs left and you want to do it with a blue output, you can do that as well with the configuration that we just showed you. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. That's how you set all this stuff up. If you have any tech support questions, feel free to reach out to us through our website chat, Facebook, email or even give us a phone call. All those ways are a great way to get a hold of us if you have any technical questions. Also, all the products that are fuel tech related in this video are going to be available in the link below. So go ahead and check out the website. You'll find the boost control block and lots of other fuel tech products that you can put on your car on there. And we'll see you guys next time.